In this beginner tutorial, you're going to learn how to camera track a fairly difficult shot. And lastly, how to composite and render your shot. Click the link in the description below to download all the assets to follow along with this tutorial. So when you open up Blender, I'm going to go into the motion tracking tab by clicking this plus button, scrolling down to VFX and selecting motion tracking. Then I'm going to click open and navigate to where I stored my image sequence. I'm going to select the first image of the EXR image sequence and then select open clip to bring the sequence into our timeline. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select set scene frames so that we have the correct start and end point of our clip. I'm going to click on prefetch to load our clip into the RAM so it plays back a lot smoother. Just going to open this up a bit. Next I'm going to set the motion model to perspective. I'm going to set the match to previous frame and I'm going to select normalize so that the trackers will be able to still continue to track in changes of light. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold D to bring up the grease pencil and I don't want any markers to track along the sky or the houses or the building in the back. So I'm going to hold D on my keypad and I'm just going to draw a mask around where I do not want the trackers to track. I'm going to press detect features, click on this 12 down button and I'm going to select placement and I want the trackers to track outside the annotated area. I'm gonna set the distance to 40. I'm gonna set the threshold to 0 0.01 and I'm gonna leave the margin at 16. Next, I'm gonna press Control T to track forwards. And you can clearly see this is a difficult shot. We barely have any trackers left in our scene. So we're just gonna do it again. We're gonna use brute force to get a proper track. So I'm gonna press A to select all markers, press H to hide the markers, select the text features, and I'm gonna press Shift Control T to track backwards. Brilliant, I'm gonna press H to hide the markers again. This time I'm gonna to go to frame 80, and I'm gonna press the text features again, and I'm gonna track forwards by pressing Control T. Perfect, I'm gonna go back to frame 80, and I'm gonna press Shift Control T to track backwards. I'm happy with that, I'm gonna press B, and I'm just gonna select these markers here, and I'm going to delete them by pressing X and selecting delete track because I only want to track what's on the floor here. Fine, I'm happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt H to bring up all the tracking markers. Next, I'm going to go over to the solve tab. I'm going to click on focal length, optical center and radial distortion. And for keyframe A and B, I believe that there is a lot of motion or perspective shift between frame 40 and 210 so i'm going to set keyframe a to 40 and keyframe b to 210 and i'm going to select solve camera motion and it's given us a solve error of 0.74 which is pretty good but i believe we can do better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the clean up 12 down button i'm going to hold shift and press the left arrow button on my keypad to go to frame one and i'm going to select filter tracks and it's come up with 115 problematic tracks. So we're gonna have to get rid of them. So I'm gonna press X and then delete track. Click on solve camera motion again. And we've got a solve error of 0 0.30 pixels, which is brilliant. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna come down to scene setup and I'm gonna select set as background and I'm gonna select set up track in scene. I'm gonna press A to select all the markers and I'm gonna press control L to lock them. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold shift and select this track. And I'm going to select this track, my third track that I've selected while holding shift. And I'm going to click on floor. And I'm going to select this track again. And I'm going to set that as my origin. And I'm going to set the scale. I know that between this track here and maybe this track is one meter. So I'm going to set set scale. And perfect, I'm well happy with that track. Now that the track is complete, I'm gonna go back into the layout. Perfect, I'm gonna press zero on my numpad to look through the camera view. And I'm just gonna move my ground plane into the foreground collection like so, and also the cube. And I'm gonna select my camera. I'm gonna click this button here, and I'm gonna select 3D cursor. I'm gonna make sure my camera's highlighted. I'm gonna press R on my keyboard, press Z, and I'm going to orientate our camera so that the red line is going across our scene. If you can see it here like so, that's perfect. Next, click it again, go back into bounding box center. I'm gonna press Z on my keyboard and go into rendered mode. 
and as you can see we're in render mode you can't really see anything and that's because if we come over to the render properties tab click on film the film twirl down button and select transparent we now can see our footage in the background of our camera so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to select the camera go into my camera properties i'm going to go into background images and i'm going to set the opacity to one that's perfect so we have our shadow catcher which is our ground plane and we have our cube i'm just going to select the ground plane press s and i'm just going to enlarge it a bit perfect next thing to do is add your hdri i've added mine already but click on the well tab next to color you want to select this button here and you want to select environment texture when you've selected environment texture click on this button and navigate to where you stored your hdri file double click it and you will then have an hdri shining light on your object the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to import the asset into our scene so i'm just going to hide our cube as we don't need it anymore I'm gonna go file append navigate to where you stored the blender file double click the file double click the collection and i'm going to select porsche 911 append all right now that we've imported the car into our scene what we need to do now is i'm just going to rotate it so i'm going to select the armature i'm going to press r z and i'm just going to rotate it this way a bit and i am going to move it backwards yeah, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna select the ground plane. I'm going to come over into our shader editor by just clicking this and selecting the shader editor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the principal BSDF and making sure I've got Node Wrangler enabled, I'm gonna press Control T to bring up the image texture and textual coordinates and mapping nodes. And as you can see right here, we have the ground plane color is reflecting onto the Porsche. Right now it has no color that's why it's reflecting a purple but what i'm going to do to just to go that step further just to add a bit more realism i'm going to come over to my image texture and i'm going to select open and i'm going to navigate to where our image sequence was stored which is here i'm going to select the first frame press a and then select open image and i'm going to click on the auto refresh so what that basically that means is that as you see our timeline is from one frame to 250 so whatever frame we are in our timeline will be the exact frame that is reflected onto the porsche perfect and i think that the hdri can be a bit brighter so i'm going to go into click this button go into weld and i'm just going to set the strength to maybe one see how that looks not too bright uh, set it to 0.75 okay just going to move this this way a tiny bit more lovely now that we have our porsche nicely tracked into our scene and reflecting the lights and the ground plane that's around it i'm going to go into my render settings click on the sampling scroll down button i'm going to set the max samples to 200 i'm going to come down to color management and i'm going to make sure the view transform is agx obviously make sure you're in cycles and if we come over to the output i am going to click on this button and set where i want my image sequence to be we're going to be exporting in an image sequence so i'm just going to set where i want it to export to i'm going to click accept and now let's talk about file formats now you can export in png as most beginners do but it's best to start off the right way and the file format we're going to use for the most flexibility is open exr i'm going to select rgba and I'm going to select float full. Once that is complete, you can either come over to file and render animation and it will render the car, the shadows and also the background with it. But we're going to do something different. We are going to come over to compositing and as you can see, you will have this exact same node set up. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to render the car and the ground plane. So in order to do that, I'm going to select this alpha over. I'm going to disconnect it from the composite and I'm going to disconnect it from the viewer like so. And I'm going to take this one, the render layer, and I'm going to connect it to the composite and I'm going to get the image and I'm going to connect it to the viewer as well. So this is what I want to render. I only want to render the CG asset, which is the Porsche car. And I'm going to press F12 to do it as a test render and I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna render out the full animation, the full 250 frames. So just press control 12 and wait for this whole thing to get rendered. Once we have rendered out the CG element, we will jump into After Effects where I will show you some compositing techniques to make your CG element look like it naturally rests within your footage. All right, so I've opened up After Effects and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import our image sequence of our footage. So I'm gonna double click the project area 
navigate to where my footage is and I'm going to select the first image of the EXR image sequence and I'm going to click import once that's done right click the EXR image sequence and I'm going to scroll down to interpret footage and I'm going to select main and as you can see assume this frame rate over here is 30 frames per second I'm going to change that to 24 click OK and I'm going to click and drag that into my composition. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the render we just rendered from Blender. So I'm going to double click the project panel. I'm going to navigate to where I rendered out my image sequence, which is in final exports. I'm going to set the first image of the EXR image sequence, select import, and I'm just going to name this Porsche. Select right click, interpret footage, main, and change this to 24 frames per second. Now I'm going to drag this so that it's above our main plate and when I play it back it should play back flawlessly. Now to make the render look like it's actually a part of our footage what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color correction to it. So come over to the effects panel type in Lumetri, click and drag Lumetri onto the Porsche layer. I'm going to lower the saturation. Let me just scroll in here for a second. I'm going to lower the saturation of the car. So if you come into basic correction, saturation, I'm just going to lower it a tiny bit. That's fine. And normally when you render CG elements and you're trying to mix them with actual footage, they come out really, really sharp. So I'm going to D sharp in this image under Lumetri color panel. I'm going to click on creative and under sharpen, I'm going to set it to minus 15. Nice. We're not finished there. Next. I want to match the noise of our CG live footage to our CG car. If you look a bit closer, there's a lot of noise in the background of our footage. Now I want the CG car to have the same amount of noise so it fits better within our scene. And in order to do that, I'm going to add a noise effect. So go to the effects and presets, type in noise, click and drag onto my CG car layer. And I'm going to set the noise to about 5%. Yep, that's good. The next effect I'm going to add, which makes the most difference to the shot is the tint effect. And what you need to do is create an adjustment layer. So right click, select adjustment layer, place it under your CG layer. So it only affects the live footage. And I'm going to add a fast box blur to the adjustment layer. So I'm going to bring up FX console, type in blur and select fast box blur. Increase the radius of the blur like so. Select my CG Porsche layer and add a tint effect to it. FX console, type in tint, select tint effect. And now we have two effects called matte black 2 and matte white 2, which represent the darkest and brightest parts of our image respectively. We will apply these effects to our CG render. So I'm going to set the amount to tint to zero. Then I'm going to click on the swab next to matte black 2 and I'm going to click a dark area on the blurred footage. Yep, that's fine. Now I'm going to set the map white to. So I'm going to pick about here just between the cloud and the sky. Right. Next, I'm going to disable the adjustment layer to remove the blurriness. And I'm going to increase the tint amount to about 31%. But just play around with the slider to see what you think matches best in your scene. And this is what it looks like without the effects. And this is what it looks like with the effects. It just adds that extra bit of realism. My name is Jermaine. Subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.